In this video, we'll be talking about uh, the basics that uh, you will need uh, in our lab of uh, electrical circuits and electronics. And uh, in today's class, we'll be talking about uh, the instruments uh, that uh, you will be using in our classes. Uh, first of all, let's take a look uh, on uh, the typical arrangement that uh, you will find uh, in our labs. Uh, so this is uh, how it looks like. Uh, this, that's a typical lab table. And uh, we will uh, discuss in this short video all the instruments that you can see and also how to work in the labs. So uh, if uh, we will have uh, lab classes, uh, you will do all your connections by yourself. But uh, this will be disconnected from the power supply. So the power supply in our labs is typically on uh, the wall. and It looks like this. Uh, you can see that here uh, we have uh, 24 volts uh, terminals. So that's a 24 volt DC distribution system. And uh, here uh, we have uh, three phase AC voltage, three times 400 volts. So every time you will be working in the lab, uh, this uh, will be disconnected, powered off, and uh, you will arrange your setup as instructed by the lab teacher. Uh, here on the table, you can see different instruments that uh, we will be using in the classes. On the left side, uh, you can see here the analog voltmeter. Uh, I will discuss um, more details about it uh, in a minute. Here we see the analog ammeter to measure the current. And uh, then we have here different types of analog voltmeters. Uh, on the right hand side here you can see a digital voltmeter uh, which can actually be used as a multimeter so uh, it can be uh, used to measure currents, uh, to measure voltages and so on. And uh, I will also discuss it in this video. And uh, here on the right hand side you can see the oscilloscope. And uh, again I will briefly discuss this device uh, in this video. But uh, you will have a separate class uh, related just uh, to the oscilloscope. So now Let's take a look first uh, on the very common device that you will actually find in the labs. And uh, this is a variable resistor. Uh, we'll be using it a lot because uh, it allows us to change the current in uh, some circuit. And uh, you will be using it uh, in the very first lab that you will do today. If you take a look on uh, the variable resistor, here on the left side you can see we have two terminals and uh, there is a third terminal here on the right hand side. Uh, the variable resistor has uh, some specific value of resistance. You can see it here that this uh, type has 42 ohms and uh, this fixed value is connected between this terminal on the right hand side and this terminal that is uh, directly uh, in line with this uh, right terminal. So this terminal and this terminal allows you to connect a fixed resistor which has a resistance of, of 42 ohms which you see here. And uh, this third terminal is uh, the slider. The slider is connected uh, to this uh, part. This is the slider, this uh, ceramic part. And uh, you can actually move it to the left and to the right. And by moving it, uh, you can change the resistance that is uh, connected between this terminal and between the two other terminals. So for example, if on this picture, uh, the terminal is uh, to the very right hand side. So between this terminal and this terminal, we have a, um, almost a full resistance. So we would measure 42 ohms. But between this terminal and the right terminal, uh, we would have uh, very small resistance. Uh, in ideal case, it will be zero. 
Here in detail you can see the uh, nameplate of uh, the resistor. So here you can see the nominal resistance. Uh, you can see here the maximum current that is allowed in the uh, resistor. So for this specific type we have uh, at max uh, 1.6 amperes and uh, here we have 42 ohms. In today's class you will be working also with different resistors. Uh, you can see them uh, on the previous page here. Uh, here uh, a little bit different size, so mechanically larger, but uh, they may have a larger or lower value in terms of ohms. It's all about uh, the power that uh, can be actually dissipated uh, in this variable resistor. Uh, so uh, if you turn the variable resistor over and we look on the bottom side, here you can see the connections. So here is uh, the fixed terminal. It's connected to the terminal that is over there. Then this uh, is the wire that uh, creates the actual resistance. And here it's uh, the second fixed terminal. And here we have a connection to the slider, which actually goes uh, with a wire to this ceramic parts. And this ceramic parts is then moving along this spiral of the wire and uh, it's changing the resistance. So that's uh, the very first instrument that we will use today in the lab. Now let's take a look on uh, the uh, instruments uh, that we will use to measure the voltages and currents. Uh, on this picture you can see an example of a DC voltmeter. Uh, you can see here uh, on uh, this picture how you need to connect the voltmeter to work properly. So here we can see that this is the positive terminal. So this uh, is the terminal that we see here on the left side. Then this terminal in the middle, uh, we can see that it's connected uh, to the terminal here where we can actually change the range. So internally, it's nothing else than a voltmeter plus some precision resistors in series. And by changing the value of those resistors, we can uh, actually change the range of the voltmeter. So this allows me to measure the voltage between 1.2 volts and uh, 240 volts. And it's connected to this terminal. This is the negative terminal. Uh, if you want to change the range here on the left hand side, uh, there is a so right hand side, there is a, this button, this knob, and you, you can turn it. And in this window, you can see what is uh, the actual selected range. Now, if you want to use uh, the voltmeter for the range of 600 volts, uh, you need to use this terminal and uh, then the range is fixed and uh, it means that the full deflection of the needle, so 120 parts, will be 600 volts. Uh, now let's take a look on in the detail that we can find here on the scale of the instrument. So if you zoom in, here uh, we can see different symbols. And those symbols tell us uh, how the instrument is made and uh, what is the accuracy and how we need to work with it. So let's take a look first here on this symbol. This symbol uh, is telling me something about the system that is inside of the instrument. So how is it made? What is its principle? And this symbol that you can see is uh, for the magnetoelectric system. Uh, this system works with a permanent magnet and uh, with a coil. Uh, I have a detail of uh, this system uh, that I will show you in a um, in few minutes. And uh, this uh, system uh, measures uh, the DC voltage. So it uh, will allow me to measure DC voltage or if we add a rectifier we can also measure the AC voltage. But uh, in principle, this system measures the mean value. And we will see that, uh, uh, for example, in AC systems, 
we need the uh, RMS value and then uh, we will be able to use a different system or we will uh, recalibrate the scale uh, to work with RMS value. So this is the first symbol is the system. Now this horizontal line uh, means uh, that the device works only with DC voltage. Now this is a voltmeter, it could be also an ampere meter, but uh, this in this case it's a voltmeter and it's DC only. Uh, this number, this 0 0.5, tells me what is the accuracy class of my voltmeter. And 0 0.5 means that uh, it has 0.5% uh, relative error with a full deflection of the needle. So, for example, if uh, I measure some voltage, then I have a full deflection, it means I'm reading 120 parts. That if the instrument is uh, properly calibrated, it should have the accuracy class of 0.5%. Now, in the ideal case, you should always measure with a full deflection if you are using an analog instrument. Now, if you would calculate the relative error, now we will find out that uh, as uh, you are uh, getting closer to the beginning of the scale, uh, the relative error is increasing. So if you measure somewhere around here, then you will have a very large relative error. Uh, and if you measure around here, around the end of the scale, then you will have a, a smaller relative error. Uh, this symbol uh, is telling me how the instrument needs to be oriented when I uh, use it. So this symbol is telling me that the instrument needs to be flat on the table and uh, you cannot tilt it. So uh, this is uh, how it should look like when you are doing the experiment. The instrument is positioned on the table. You do not tilt it and uh, you read from the top. And uh, this is the working position. If you tilt it, it will uh, not give you the correct reading. And the last symbol, uh, this star with a number inside, is telling me what is the test voltage uh, for this instrument. And uh, the number is uh, the test voltage in kilovolts. So the instrument was tested with a test voltage of uh, 2000 volts. Now there is one more value that we need to discuss. And this is this number. You typically find it in the middle of the scale. You can see here that for this specific instrument, it's telling me it's 1000 ohms per volt. And uh, this is uh, the internal resistance of the voltmeter. And uh, per volt means it is related to the volts of the range. So uh, if, for example, we have a range of 24 volts, then uh, here we see that we have 1000 ohms per volt. We multiply those two values together and uh, we know that the internal resistance for this range is uh, 24 kilo ohms. Now if I change the range, if I would have for example uh, the range uh, of uh, 240 volts, then the internal resistance would be 1000 ohms times 240. So this will be a uh, much higher internal resistance. So remember that uh, the mm, internal resistance of the voltmeter does not depend on the actual value, but it depends on the selected range. If your needle is at 30 parts or at 80 parts or at 110 parts, the internal resistance is always the same. And it will change only if you will change the selected range. Uh, different instruments may have different uh, internal resistance. Uh, in our labs, uh, you typically find uh, voltmeters which have 1000 ohms per volt or 5000 ohms per volt. Uh, we will see an example a little bit later. Uh, it is very important to know 
how you need to read correctly from the scale. So here on the left hand side you see how not to do it, this is wrong. Uh, all the instruments have a mirror here behind the scale. And uh, if you want to read correctly from the scale, you need to position yourself in such a way that the needle and its reflection in the mirror are parallel, so they are in line, so you just see this line. So here is an example how to read it correctly. Now this would be uh, 115.5 divisions. If you do it like this, if you read it from some side, you see that uh, I don't see the needle aligned with its image over there, and uh, I see a different value. So I, although the voltage here was exactly the same, this experiment, here I would read completely different value. Uh, now, uh, how to read uh, the voltage and how to uh, calculate the voltage from the scale. Uh, you should always read the number of divisions that you have here uh, on the scale that you are currently reading. So let's say here I read 115.5. And then you need to look uh, on the range that you currently have. So for example, here I have uh, 24 volts. And 24 volts is the full deflection, so here it would correspond to the 120 parts. And then, uh, by using a simple calculation, uh, you know that 120 parts is 24 volts. So you're looking for a voltage that corresponds to 115.5 in my example. Uh, this approach is the same also for other analog instruments, including ammeters, including watt meters. So we should always read the number of divisions and then calculate uh, how many uh, volts or amperes or watts uh, correspond to one division that uh, you see on the scale. Now different voltmeters and different instruments they may have different uh, total number of divisions some of them will have 120 some of them will have 100 you will see many examples in our labs. Uh, this is uh, another type of uh, a voltmeter and uh, in this case, it's an AC voltmeter. Uh, first of all, take a look here in the middle of the scale. This one has uh, 5000 ohms per volt. And again, let me remind you that it's, it's related to the selected range and not to the measured voltage. Uh, we can see that here uh, it is using diff the same system also magnetoelectric, but here we can see a symbol for a dial. We can see it also here on the schematic. So uh, this uh, diode will rectify the voltage, and uh, hence this is an AC voltmeter, and uh, it will measure only AC voltage. We can see it here. Here this uh, symbol is uh, telling me that it can measure uh, AC voltage only. So actually on this voltmeter we may find it three times that it's AC. We may see it here with the symbol of the diode. We may see it here in the symbol of the system. And then we may see it here with this symbol. And all those symbols are telling the same info that it's an AC voltmeter. Now with this symbol again uh, it uh, is telling us that uh, it should be horizontally oriented on the table. This is 1.5, so it is an accuracy of 1.5%, uh, again for full deflection of the needle. And again, this is the test voltage. Uh, here you can see uh, a different type of uh, AC voltmeter. Uh, by different type, I mean that it's using a different system. Now, uh, the, all the previous, the both previous voltmeters were uh, magnetoelectric, and they basically measure the uh, the mean value 
of uh, the signal, so the mean value of the voltage. Uh, on the other hand, here this system is called electromagnetic. And uh, this system, in principle, will measure the RMS value. So this is a voltmeter. It measures the RMS value of an AC voltage. You can see that it's different here on the scale. We can see that it's not linear. So here uh, we don't have such a fine resolution on the beginning. And the same here at the end. There is not such a fine resolution as in the middle of the scale. Now what you see on this picture, it's an AC voltmeter. So here you see the symbol for the system. We can see that this is an AC instrument. Here this is accuracy class of 0 0.5 and this is the position and this is again the test voltage. Uh, you can see here that uh, this particular instrument uh, allows me to change the ranges. Uh, here I can select between 12 volts, 24, 60 and 120. And uh, you can see that uh, in my picture I have 60 volts uh, currently selected. Now the selection is made by a knob that is here on the right hand side. So remember that this kind of instrument measures the RMS voltage. We will discuss on the lecture what this actually means. Uh, and uh, in today's lab you will see the values that you will obtain with different kinds of voltmeters. Uh, now let's take a look uh, inside of such a voltmeter. Uh, if we look here on the system, it is uh, the magnetoelectric system. And uh, here we can see the needle. We, here we can see the mirror. Uh, what is actually inside, that is there, there is a, a coil in here. And this coil is connected to the needle. And uh, there is a spring that counteracts the torque that is created by this coil. And all this is, an, is inside of an opening that uh, is in a permanent magnet. So we have a magnetic field. We connect the measured current. In this case, it's an ammeter. The measured current goes through the coil. It uh, creates its own magnetic field. And it, it will interact with the permanent magnet and will create a torque. So the needle will start to move and uh, in order to counteract the movement and to stop the, the movement at some specific position, there is a, a torsion spring and uh, it will stop the motion at the value of the current that we are able to read on the scale. Uh, now let's take a look on a short video uh, where we can actually uh, find uh, the uh, how how is how it's actually how it's actually moving. So uh, here we are actually moving it manually, but you can see here that uh, the coil is moving, and uh, here this spiral. This is actually the uh, spiral uh, that the, the the spring that counteracts the movement of the needle created by the torque from the current. Uh, the last analog instrument that we will discuss is an ammeter. So this is an instrument that uh, is used to measure current. Uh, again here on the scale we can read the position, we can read the accuracy class and the system. Uh, so this is a DC ammeter. It has 100 parts on the scale. And uh, here you can see this is the positive terminal. This is a plus sign. And here we can see the different terminals if we want to use different ranges. So this instrument does not have any knob that is used to change the range. But uh, I need to manually reconnect the range if I want to measure different current. Now if you do not know what your measured current or voltage will be, then you should always use the highest available range. If you are doing any experiment, uh, you should uh, have an idea about the voltages and currents that you can have in the circuit. 
uh, at least a rough idea. You should know if it's, for example, uh, 10 milliamperes or 10 amperes. And uh, then you can select the highest range. You can run the experiment. You can see that if you are, for example, are here at the beginning of the scale, then you need to change the range and select a range that is uh, smaller. The goal uh, of the measurement in order to increase accuracy is always to measure around the end of the scale because here you have the smallest relative error. Now in the labs you will also use a lot uh, digital instruments. So this is such an example. It's a digital multimeter. You can see that uh, it measures AC voltage. We have two available ranges in here. Uh, it can measure also DC voltage. Uh, it can measure DC current, as you can see here. Now there is a special terminal for uh, the 10 amp range. So if you want to measure uh, with this range, you need to use this terminal as a plus and this terminal as a minus. And uh, if you want to measure smaller currents, uh, then uh, it's uh, connected with this terminal and with that terminal. The same uh, terminals are used uh, if you want to measure the resistance or the voltages. So we will use a lot this instrument. You can see that uh, it has only three decimal places. Uh, so uh, we will not use it for very accurate experiments, but uh, we will use it a lot in the labs to get uh, uh, let's say normal readings uh, with uh, some limited accuracy. Uh, here is another example of uh, a different digital voltmeter. Uh, it is much more accurate. You can see here that it's uh, six and a half digits. So it has three more digits uh, than the yellow one. And uh, you can see here an example of the mesh value. Now actually this is uh, not only a voltmeter but it is also uh, a multimeter, so it can measure DC voltage, it can measure AC voltage, uh, it can measure resistance, and many other properties uh, are available. Uh, it can also uh, lock the data into the memory, uh, so you can uh, record the data and uh, then later you can plot them in charts. So for some specific experiments, we will use uh, this kind of digital instrument in the labs. Uh, you will use this instrument also in the labs uh, for the subject uh, measurement engineering. And the last device that I would like to talk about is the oscilloscope. Now there will be uh, one uh, entire class where we will talk about oscilloscope and uh, where we will work with the device. Uh, for the time being, it's sufficient to know that the oscilloscope allows you to display the waveform of a signal. So, for example, here you can see a, a square wave signal. And uh, we can read the amplitude and uh, we can read the, uh, the frequency of the signal. So, uh, in this class, uh, we will use the oscilloscope as as a device that shows us only the waveform. Uh, now, in a few weeks, where we will be doing uh, transients, uh, we will have a more detailed explanation of all those knobs and uh, how to actually work in uh, with the oscilloscope and how to measure uh, accurately with this device. Uh, and now uh, let's take a look on uh, the lab tasks that uh, we will do today.